Rachel and I want to better understand DFSP. What is DFSP? It stands for dermatofibromosarcoma protuberans, and it's a confusing name not because it's confusing clinical and pathologic findings. So it starts off as a firm plaque-like lesion that grows on the skin, and it can grow fast, slow, or remain stationary. Now this is often misdiagnosed for years, and one of the uh, current methods of treatment is a wide local excision of this tumor, and this takes out massive amounts of tissue. So imagine with me for a second. You're going to go to the doctor, and you're going to confused about this little bump on your forehead, you're a little curious, what is this? And now the doctor, imagine this, they're going to tell you, you're going to have to excise this whole part on your forehead and part of your scalp to remove this tumor. And then you're going to have a bald spot on your head for the rest of your life. That is the reality that DFSP patients live in. And sadly, even after removal, these tumors recur in up to half of patients. They are in constant worry that this tumor is going to come back. What can we do about this uncertainty? Well, my research all started when a patient on a DFSP support group on Facebook asked Dr. Gardner to research them. Now, these groups have thousands of members from all over the world, and so far, we've posted on their pages asking for participants, and we already have around 47. So we plan to survey them, and then we're going to analyze that survey, and we're going to collect their slides and observe their pathologic changes, and we're also collecting blood samples before and after their surgeries for DFSP. Now, we are testing the blood for a potential tumor marker that could be in the blood. And if we find this, this could be very important in measuring tumor recurrence. So, one of the advantages to using Facebook is we gather a large sample size of patients with a rare tumor quickly, and the follow-up is easier compared to normal studies. So, uh, normally you find uh, someone's address or their phone number to try to follow up with them. But those things change over time. However, my friends, Facebook is forever. And we plan to use it to follow patients over 5, 10, and 15 years through Facebook. So in preparing for this talk, I posted on one of the pages to ask them, how has DFSP changed your life? Within about 48 hours, I got 37 responses from real patients. Fear, afraid to go to the doctor, low self-confidence and self-esteem, and defined by my scar were some of my responses. So the first thing you see about someone is their image. Your image is what makes you different and unique from everyone else in the world. Having a scar from DFSP not only changes your life, it changes your image. Do you ever get annoyed by a small pimple or blemish on your face? Just think about how these patients feel when they see their scars on their face, their body, their arms, and their legs. Their scars serve as a daily reminder of their struggles. We must have more research about DFSP in order to turn their pain and anguish into a hope of a better future.